For generations, PC gamers have been bolted to the desk, unable to venture to the comfort of the couch without picking up a controller, or even worse, using the dreaded console. I'm joking of course, but gamers who enjoy using the leetness of the keyboard and mouse have been longing for an elegant solution to reclining on the couch and playing games on their TV. We've seen some attempted solutions before, but most come at the expense of a full-size mechanical keyboard or include a tiny and weird wireless mouse with no extra buttons that you can barely hold onto. Pair that with a minuscule mouse pad and you may as well have just stayed at your desk. On top of this, to my knowledge there's never really been a comfortable solution that could provide a stable surface to play on. I've tried using a chopping board as a mouse pad, but it's not really comfortable and you can't fit your keyboard on there too. You can't just use the couch either, it's too low and the mouse doesn't track well enough to play proper games. Finally, I don't consider leaning forward and playing on the coffee table a real solution either, so what are we left with? Until now, not much, but allow me to introduce the Lapdog. The Lapdog is a new gaming control centre from Corsair and it aims to deliver living room gaming with zero compromise. When I first saw the box, I was a little surprised, but also pleased at how big it was. If this was truly going to deliver great living room gaming, then it certainly needed to be bigger than solutions I'd seen before. Let's take a tour around the device first. There are two main pieces to the lap dog, the control platform and the padded lap cushion. The lap cushion can be quickly and easily attached and removed thanks to six magnetic points that grab the control center quite firmly. The cushion itself is made from memory foam and honestly it feels very comfortable on your legs. Lastly, there's a little spot to store the Allen key, though I think it would have been smart if this was magnetic too to stop it falling out. Onto the control center. This is where all the action goes down. On the right, we begin with a sizable 11 inch by 11 inch mouse pad plate. This is a textured aluminium surface that screws into the body of the control center. My mouse tracked very well on this surface, as you'd expect, and it also provides good grip for a mouse pad of your own to sit on top. Unfortunately, I didn't have any mouse pads that were small enough to use on the mouse pad plate, but it was really no issue to play on the plate itself. On the left side of the lapdog is the keyboard tray. This is sized perfectly to fit Corsair's K65 and K70 series of keyboards, and there's an adapter plate on the right hand side to suit the different lengths of these keyboards. With the adapter plate removed, my K70 is slotted in absolutely perfectly. Running across the top of the keyboard tray is a removable cover for the cable compartment. This is where you feed your cabling from your keyboard through to the USB hub at the right hand corner of the device. This USB hub is the heart of the lapdog. Powered by a DC input, this USB 3 hub provides users with four powered USB 3 ports. Two of these ports are internal and are designed to connect your keyboard and mouse. The keyboard uses the aforementioned cable route through the top of the lapdog and there's a small port at the top left of the mouse pad for your mouse cable. If you're using a wireless mouse, you could also plug your receiver in at this point too. On the right hand side, you'll find two external USB 3 ports which could be used for a USB headset and things like your smartphone or USB thumb drives. The closest one to the user is also a fast charging port, so this is where you'll be best off connecting your phone, tablet or Bluetooth speaker for a quick charge. Lastly, in terms of ports, you'll find the DC input and host PC port ports at the back right of the lapdog's body. Plugging into these ports is the supplied and conjoined USB and DC cable. This cable has plenty of length at 16 feet or just under 5 meters and at the other end you attach the little DC power pack and plug the USB end into any USB 3 port on your PC. Interestingly, the DC power pack I received was rated for only 1 amp. This makes me question how fast charging the fast charging port, which is capable of delivering 1.5 amps, could possibly be with this supplied power pack especially if you're running a mouse, keyboard and other devices through the hub too. Setting up the lapdog was pretty simple, although you wouldn't want to be sharing a keyboard between your desktop and the device as it's not super fast to install and remove. As mentioned, there's a supplied Allen key that can be clumsily stored in the lapdog and this is used to unscrew the two screws on the cable cover, single screw on the keyboard adapter and four screws on the mouse pad. Once these are all removed, you can slot the keyboard in first and stuff the cables in the top section. Course has supplied a couple of zip ties too, so you can tie your cables down to the little cable tie anchors on the floor of the cable compartment. Next, I simply plugged my mouse in, screwed the pieces back in, and I was ready to go. For actual gaming on the couch, the lapdog was really cool. It was super comfortable in my lap, first of all, and I played for several hours in StarCraft 2, a game that's super frustrating to play if you're in an uncomfortable mouse position. It was also quite good for Black Ops 3. I'm not going to say I was as good as I was at my desk in multiplayer, but it's pretty much fine for single player and certainly any sort of casual style gaming. My only ergonomic complaint would be about the front edge of the lapdog. Due to its shape, it's actually quite a sharp edge, and if I had the lapdog positioned in a way where my wrists were leaning against it, then it definitely dug in a bit. 
I think a curved edge or some sort of padding here would have been amazing. My only other criticism of the device is the lack of a 3.5mm pass through. If you use analog headphones then you're kind of stuck unless your cable is somehow long enough to reach the computer from the couch. I feel like this would have been an easy and inexpensive inclusion and it was a shame to see it was missing. USB or wireless headphones of course work very well with this setup. All around the Lapdog's a really awesome implementation of couch keyboard and mouse gaming. I think users will have to keep in mind that they'll really need a second keyboard and mouse to keep permanently in the Lapdog however, unless they really don't mind swapping them out each time, but since there are 6 screws and potentially cable ties involved, I can't really see this happening. The Lapdog would definitely be my go to for couch gaming from now on and I really look forward to running into you guys on the Steam servers from my couch. I don't have official pricing information as of yet, but it looks like you'll be able to pick up the lapdog as a standalone for 90 US dollars or 115 Australian dollars, or 200 US dollars with a Corsair gaming keyboard, and likely around 250 Australian dollars for that setup. Not exactly cheap, but when we're gaming peripherals, ever inexpensive. Let me know what you think of the lapdog in the comments. I'm your host, first name Matt, last name as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Demonic presence at unsafe levels. Lockdown.